we always say it, prevention is better than a cure. At the heart of our healthcare system is general practitioners, the ones who are in the prime position to champion preventative care, but the system doesn't incentivize them to do so. On the show today, I chat with Dr. Gihan Demel at Next Practice Clinic in Paran. And in this episode, we talk about how to encourage those most at need to prioritize their health, the role of payers, including employers, in funding preventative care, and how technologies like the Stream Deck and generative AI can improve efficiency in general practice. Collaboration starts with the conversation, Team Health Tech. Let's make it up. Welcome to Talking Health Tech, featuring content and community about technology and healthcare. We acknowledge the traditional owners of lands these conversations were recorded and pay respect to elders past and present. Hey, Gian, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for coming all the way to Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, yes. and great suburb, I've got to say, in terms of location of the of the clinic and then the clinic itself. It's beautiful here. So it's great to be able to record this conversation. Those listening in can also see, um, you know, where we are as well on the video on YouTube or our uh, website as well. But Gihan, I feel like I'm in a consultation with you here, and that's the <laughs> I guess that that adds to the the vibe. But uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yes, so I'm Gihan. I think we've known for a long while now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've been listening to your podcast. You're one of the OGs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's always been a been a pleasure knowing you <laughs> and and being part of this whole whole team as yeah. well. Uh, so I'm a GP. Um, general practice, I think, is more of a uh, less understood area when it comes to technology. I think most uh, technology, when it comes to health tech, um, are focused um, on large scale hospital based care, both mm. in Australia and in, at, at a global stage as well. I think you, you're in uh, Vegas uh, yeah. go, going to health conference just, just, just recently. Just recently yeah. I'm sure yeah. it was uh, a lot of fun. From but, Vegas to Victoria. Yeah, that's yeah. My, uh, my itinerary. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had the call face now. So <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the good thing about general practice is you get to know patients when they are well, mm. when they're unwell, when they're happy, when mm. they're sad. It's not just about troubleshooting. In many cases, lo- lots of people think they come and see a GP when they're unwell to troubleshoot. Mm. But in many cases, people come and seek that long-term preventative care, for instance, and you get to mm. know the patients, get to know their families, get to know their communities. So it's not. It's, it's one of the only one of the many specialties where you get to know the patient long term mm. and. Uh, and treat not only when it comes to one specific issue, you, you're treating multiple issues over time. Yeah. And, and, and in, a, in a way, we create relationships. So from, from a baby to a 110-year-old, um, it, it's, it's a journey. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm pleased to be a GP today. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot in that, isn't there? In, in, in this very human service of healthcare, general practice is is one that every you know australian every human kind of interacts with at Mm. some point but it's as you say it's um a a relationship thing and and not uh, it meant some people may take that for granted and and may think about their gp visit more as a a need to do and a transactional thing because they need to get their doctor certificate otherwise they're not going to get paid for being sick today but Mm -hmm. then others you, as you say, you, you know the, the multi-generations that have come through for a long period of mm-hmm. time. So there's, mm-hmm. there's certainly different factors at play there, right? Absolutely. Uh, and that's where we have a bit of a gap when it comes to technology as well. Mm. There are apps out there that will give you a medical certificate, but patient never comes to see a GP for a medical certificate. Mm. That's just an outcome of a, a consultation and an outcome of an interaction. The reason why patients come and see you is because they're unwell. The, the, the entire agenda is about how unwell they are, well they are, or how to get them better. Yeah. And medical certificate is just just an, just a side note. Yeah. You don't see an electrician for a yeah. safety certificate. <laughs> yeah, you right. see an electrician for, 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 for some, some work done, and yeah. that's what we do. Uh, and yeah, so if technology can focus on that real life, aspect of general practice that that Mm. that's an area where there's a lot of potential yeah and you touched on this before uh that the 
um, side of not just treating someone when they're sick, but there's a role for a, a big part of what you do in the general practice side is actually around the prevention piece. Unpack that a little bit more for me. Tell me about why, why, I mean, I, I can assume why that's important in terms of stopping people getting sick and then mm-hmm. doing that. But what does that look like for you in, in general practice and how do you think about it? Now, patients come in usually through these doors when they are unwell. Mm. And we, we have 15 minutes or half an hour. Mm. I normally tend to spend about half an hour at our clinic here. Standard appointment is about half an hour because we, we do spend a lot of time on other things, just not the reason for a presentation. And what happens is then we talk about a specific issue and then we talk about other things such as sexual health, uh, STI prevention, heart health assessments, mm. smoking cessation, immunizations. <laughs> Lots of people don't even know what the current uh, guidelines or what the advice is around COVID. Uh, and in fact, we have some very small numbers of uh, COVID going around at the moment. Uh, and because it's not in the media, people don't know. And we're heading up to Christmas where we're expecting more patients to be unwell. So having vaccinated now, if you're in a high risk category, particularly, mm. is a good thing. But those are the things patients in general don't know about and that conversation that they come in for a medical certificate is the only opportunity sometimes they get to understand that bigger picture mm. the problem another problem i have in, in in when it comes to technology is there are lots of stuff that are out there that are probably not evidence based so there are lots of collecting data having a like an apple watch in there mm. which is there are there are very helpful aspects there as well but in many cases general practice is all about undifferentiated presentation. So patients come with a whole heap of presentation of problems or signs or symptoms. Some of them are very useful. Some of them are not so much. And the GP's job is to differentiate those undifferentiated presentations or problems into a meaningful one. Mm. That's why we are different as, that's why general practice is a different or different specialty compared to other specialists, yeah. specialists yeah. where patients are usually differentiated and then they go see a cardiologist. Usually the background work has been done and at least we've figured out why they need to see the cardiologist in the first place. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got so many different sources of information coming yep. from both angles, right? You've got yep. all the, particularly during the, the, the everything changed every day from the COVID side and yep. you've got to factor that in, but then the patient comes not just with what they say, but yes. what they've Googled, what tiktok videos they've watched yep. uh like everything in there like because and, and their friends and their facebook groups that they've referred to and they're trying to synthesize that to you or show you something they've found and then that's your role to i, I guess uh summarize that and, and do it effectively absolutely and and that's a hard part part in general practice to go through that uncertainty and figure out what's important and what's mm. not so much and focus on what's important and sometimes when patients come in chest pain for instance Sometimes we have to jump straight into cardiac causes because that's something that kill you. But the root cause of that could be something completely unrelated, something very much related to mental health in some cases. Mm. And knowing patients long term, sometimes knowing their families, knowing what they're going through, if their parents are unwell, if their children are unwell, if they're struggling at work, that background story is very important to actually identify what is going on. When it comes to, like, if you just go into a data set or just jump straight into AI and try to mm. figure out pure yes, no data, you do actually lose that human touch. That's why when it c- comes to collecting data as well, um, I'm very mindful and careful about, like, you know, what tests need to be done because there, there's something called pre and post test probability, for instance, when mm. you're doing a test. Figuring out what's the meaning of doing a test, what's the meaning of collecting Mm. certain data through a variable, that meaning is very important to understand because at the end of the day, all data sets are data sets. Mm. There's always going to be a bell curve. There's always going to be, it's never a yes, no answer when it comes to health data and diagnosis. It's always, they're going to be error, for instance. So if I collect all your heart, um, heart rate data or if your apple watch is or your watch is telling you you're mm. having a, uh, a atrial fibrillation mm. figuring out what the underlying causes are whether you're actually going through that it's it's a it's a bit of a job and that's where ai technology and actual real life yeah uh, call face care can be a bit bit uh, big 
complicated. Yes, yeah. and 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 the and I guess to build on that too, I would imagine there's w one element of taking all these disparate bits of information mm. and, and and synthesizing them to give the meaning for you as the GP to be able to communicate that. But I guess if you're providing care, particularly from a preventative side for mm. a patient, you obviously need that patient. It's for the patient, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to bring that person along. And I, and, and I know, and also from personal experience, when mm. you think about you know, doing something that is a significant health intervention from a patient's point of view, when you, when you think about the end result, that's, you don't really know that pathway to Absolutely. be able to get fitter or quit smoking or drink, like just be a, a, a better human. It's kind of like, well, how do I start there? So how do you kind of take people through that, that journey? Because it's one thing for you to understand, mm. but it's kind of pointless if, if the patient doesn't come along with you. Absolutely. And that's a conversation I have with most of my patients. Mm. Lots of my patients, particularly in this suburb of being Pran at the moment, uh, uh, lots of my patients I see here are young um, fit well people because of the demographics of the mm. area. Uh, they come and say, hey, doc, let's test everything. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm here for a, for a general checkup. Let's, let's do everything. Yeah. And it's, in, it's interesting to have that conversation with the patient. Sometimes it's actually easy to print out everything and give you mm. yeah, everything, go test yourself and come back. But what we do with the results is the hard part. Mm. So it's important to spend time with that patient and say, okay, what do you mean by everything? What's helpful? What's not helpful? Mm. I joke, I mean, it's actually not a joke. So if I do an, enough pregnancy tests on men, mm. some of them will actually come back positive. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's a bit of cliche, but yeah. it's actually true. Mm. Uh, and that's because no test is 100% accurate. There's always going to be an error, an error rate in a blood uh, based beta HCG or a pregnancy test is about one in thousand to one in ten thousand. <laughs> so th that's mm. one in ten thousand is a real number. You know, mm. there's what a few million patients are uh, people in Victor uh, in, in this part of town only. And yeah. If I test everyone, some of them will, and that some of them will have a real reason why. Is sometimes certain testicular cancers, for instance, will mm. cause that problem. But it's understanding what you're going to do with the results is the important part. At the College of GPs, we have a, a very valuable publication called the RSGP Red Book, so, mm. which actually outlines important parts of uh, general practice where we can actively get involved in day-to-day -day care and find out what certain preventative strategies are going to be helpful. And it's actually not rocket science. Many of those preventative strategies in a young, fit, well person is about diet, is about exercise, mm. is about smoking cessation. Vaping cessation is a huge oh, problem yeah. right now. So the uh, alcohol, mental health, sleep, sexual health, mm. uh, how they're enjoying time with their family, when was your last holiday? Those are the conversations sometimes mm. we have. And this one patient who was, I mean, having this conversation, I said, hey, when was your last holiday? And uh, and he was like, I was about five or six years ago before COVID. And like, well, I think you need a mm. holiday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds very paternalistic, but I think it was a it was a moment where he actually thought, hang on, I haven't had a holiday. That could actually be a problem. Yeah. Let's think about it. But, but yeah. surely those, and you know, in that example, whilst yeah. it may not, that one intervention, one thing yes. that you do, whilst it may not, you know, get you from zero to 100%, that, yeah. that incremental increase, mm. surely by at least acting like what you're trying to be, you're kind of fulfilling that process by little steps at a time, right? I mean. There's something called marginal gains theory. And mm. I think if you look into that, there's a very interesting concept where you know, in the UK, the UK cycling team utilized this back in the early 2000s where mm. they were doing lots of cycling. Again, this is my version of, uh, of the story, uh, but wasn't winning. Uh, mm. And the coach that they had at the time, and pardon me, I can't remember his name, but must be a visionary, came up with this idea where you take simple, straightforward, small steps. And simple, straightforward, small steps over time make a huge difference. Mm. That's what we should do in general practice. That's what we should actually focus on when it comes to health technology as well. Yeah. Those simple steps are the stuff that's going to help us as clinicians at the mm. cold face, as a patient. And those simple st steps will then create a chain reaction and will eventually make huge changes when it comes to a healthy population. Yeah, I love that. Look, and, and I guess 
lean into that then, you know, the, the, the marginal gains concept, both from a patient side in getting better care, mm. but, you know, you, you said as well in terms of health te- uh, technology and yeah. healthcare and, and what we can do there. Talk to me about, you know, with you as a GP, you've got some pretty cool kit on the thing here. <laughs> yep, so, yep. so you know, not as someone who's who's leaning into the, the technology side, how, how have you seen, I guess, the role of technology in general practice leading up to this point and then beyond? Absolutely. Very good question. Yeah. The biggest problem for us is time. Patients mm. come here usually for a, for a troubleshooting issue. Usually we have 15 minutes, yeah. sometimes half an hour. So our standard appointment here is half an hour. We also have a 15 minute brief appointment. Sometimes that's very that's much That's cool, 15's brief. That's, that's rare. 15, in, in 15 is brief. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think we train our patients in a way to utilize that time wise, mm. like, you know, wisely. Uh, but sometimes patients say on the, like you know, on the way out, by the way, doctor, while I'm here, yeah. and then they drop the, the big issue and then I'll, <laughs> okay, let's sort that out. So yeah. that's a hard part in general practice because time management is a, very difficult one to sort out sometimes. Mm. The general practice, particularly in Australia, and 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 that's what it's meant to be as a specialty, we are meant to look after the volume. We are meant to look after a whole group of patients and the systems in a way is set up to incentivize that as, that as well. So volume, uh, Medicare bulk billing is a huge problem now where we can't sustain with the amount of funding that's coming from Medicare because it is actually focused very much on volume, mm. but which is a strength of general practice, but finding that balance between volume and quality, that's what general practice is all, all about. Yeah. So if I have 15 minutes with you, well, if I have half an hour with you still, I, I, I might talk about two or three things. I will still need to use my time to do notes. There's a bit of bureaucracy around Medicare and uh, <laughs> there actually is a lot of bureaucracy <laughs> around. Say, that's very generous. Yeah, yeah. so they, those <laughs> small steps sometimes take yeah. a lot of time. So yeah. I, I think I can come back to that marginal gains principle mm. where at the end of the day, the conversation with the patient is the most valuable part. Mm-hmm. We are making changes, simple things like sometimes smoking cessations. Uh, like, you know, we have that brief, very gentle conversation. And next time the patient, because like, so we don't want to sound paternalistic and push them mm. away as well. And sometimes next time say they come back and say, hey, doc, I listened to you and I think that was very important and mm. I figured and I, I, I stopped smoking or vaping. Mm. So that's very, very rewarding in a way in general practice. But yeah, so making small changes in a limited period of time, we've got to come up with um, strategies to improve time yeah. management and in, like, you know, if you have strategies around technology where we can improve our productivity, yeah, uh, that, that, that's work, one of those marginal gains kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 And I guess, you know, because you, you pointed out there's, there's a lot of uh, reporting requirements or, or just, you know, things that you need to do as a GP from, from a, um, in order for everyone to get paid or to get their, their results or for the, for the system to work correctly, you've got to fill out a lot of fields and Absolutely. those fields need to then shoot off to other places. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, uh, so I guess it sounds like then one of the the needs then from a technology side is to, to think about that. Where can you, like by shaving off a minute or two, those marginal gains yes. in, in a consultation that makes a meaningful impact. Absolutely. And I think we'll talk about the stream deck a little bit. So yeah, that, that was to, a yeah. really good uh, uh, piece of technology and it was designed for gamers or, and streamers online uh, yeah, yeah. to like, you know, if you don't know much about, I'm sure you do, but there are, there's an audience who don't know much about Stream Deck. Mm. Uh, it's a little device that's sitting over here. Uh, I think we can take a couple of shots later, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, essentially you can program it to run multiple, what we call macros or multiple tasks in one go. Yeah. During COVID vaccination time, this was like, you know, it was a huge time saver. Mm. It's like uh, a little control center on your, on ab- your thing. Absolutely. There. Yeah, yeah. So just, just sitting here. So uh, there's a number of icons that are created here. Yeah. We'll probably go back to this in more detail, but I'll come back to the, the, the COVID vaccination part. Mm. So I've got an icon here that's created for the stream deck. So essentially when patients came in, like, you know, during those dark days of COVID, Mm. people lined up 50 to 100 to sometimes 400 people lining up to get their COVID vaccine. 
And there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear, a lot of questions that we had to go through. And at the same time, it comes back to that volume principle as well. We had to mm. vaccinate 400 people in a limited period of time. Mm. And so this set up um, in a way to sort of ease that task that we can spend more time with the patient talking about their fears and uncertainties and talk about how COVID vaccine would have been helpful. Mm. Uh, but what I did do those days is if you at the end of the conversation or consult you still need to do your notes you still need to write down which arm you had your covid vaccine it was the first dose the second dose the fourth dose what mm. the batch number was what the expiry date was we had to upload all that information to your my health record of strain immunization registry then we had to come back to the the software and close the note and then we had different item numbers we come back to bureaucracy <laughs> for different doses so you had to remember remember them add the right number there are different medicare rebates for mm. first dose versus second dose versus where they had we had a prolonged conversation with the patient so that part where you do that that paperwork or that part where you use your computer it would take about good two three minutes per patient mm. to do that now if you if you spend four minutes doing that on the computer, you won't have time to have a chat with the patient and you won't have time to give the vaccine. So this was very helpful because that's all set up in these uh, buttons. So if you're coming in for your third dose and you're having on your left arm, mm. all I needed to do was to press that button. Mm. I can show you the, how the macros are run in the background mm. under, the, bonnet, under the, the, the bonnet. What it does, it usually runs about, about 40 to 60 steps and in that one button, yeah, uh, right. so you press the one button, it'll do your notes, which we can alter depending on what the, con the yeah. depending on the conversation we had. It'll add the ba the the batch number and upload that information and do all of that within twenty one seconds as mm. opposed to four minutes. So that's a huge yeah. difference in time. Yeah, where we could um, improve the quality time we spend with the patient yeah and also improve our productivity yeah but th this is like something that i find fascinating because mm -hmm. it's not like stream deck came out with a general practice module yes and it's kind of like it's, it's a very i wouldn't think it was their target i could be wrong but i don't think that the general practice landscape in australia is the target market for stream deck <laughs> however it it speaks to this point that we always touch on which yep. is are there ways for the the, the role of technology is isn't to get in the way of things and to make it, it sounds dumb to say, but mm. it's just what we do. We mm. build technology that gets in the way of providing care because we think it, it might help. Mm. However, in this example, if you need to click 26 times and do this, there's probably just, and you're gonna keep doing the same thing over and over, yeah. run a macro and, and better yet than doing a keyboard trick, I press one button on yep. your thing and then away Absolutely. you go. So that makes so much sense. That again comes down to that marginal gains theory. Now, when, when we go to big conferences and health tech conferences and mm. talk with investors, technologists. There's a big focus on big picture. There's big focus on <laughs> um, hospitals. There's big focus on things that radicalize the, the, the healthcare. Mm. But in many cases, again, I might sound a bit cliche, but there are lots of solutions out there looking for a problem. Yes. But what we really need is something very small that can resolve a problem we already have. Mm. And that, that's a brilliant example of that. We're just using very simple technology. There's probably a bit of hard work to, to do yeah. to actually set it up. And it's I can't take all the credit for it because lots of doctors got together and uh, at my couple of clinics that I work with and then uh, through um, Tech for Docs that uh, you're also a member yeah, of. The Facebook it's a group, free, yeah. not-for-profit, uh, uh, like, you know, no, non-commercial Facebook yeah. group. Lots of doctors talk to each other. We share our Stream Deck profiles and we come up with the ideas. And uh, yeah, so there, there are so many patients. I, I think I'm, it's such a, yeah. it's such an Australian <laughs> GP thing to do though. Like, yeah, <laughs> but it's the nature of, I guess the nature, like, I don't want to get too philosoph philosophical about yeah. it, but you know, the really good GPs, you mentioned it before about, investigating d digging digging deep and and that relationship aspect like it's yep. not surface level like give me the the solution and i'll just use it like mm. you've gone deep into the guts of, of of working out how to build something to in the end solve a problem that you face on a day-to-day -day. so yep. uh that's 
That's amazing. And we'll, we'll, draw, we'll do a, probably a separate video or something to kind of go through what that looks like in mm. more detail for those that really want to dive into. I think that'd be really cool. Absolutely. So then as you were talking through then earlier, Gihan, you uh, mentioned that uh, you, you talked about just the, the, the way that healthcare is funded and the different stakeholders. And you, you also touched on, I was in, I was in the US uh, a week or two ago, yep. speaking with a lot of providers but payers and the focus in the US is very much around the payers and yep. that model because you know it's quite different in the US where employers are very much involved in the healthcare side because that's where mm. the insurance comes from. Mm. Whereas here in Australia, historically, you know, a lot of Australians assume healthcare is a right and is free, and that's amazing that we've we've got that. However, as you also touched on, there's been a lot of pressure and we haven't moved with the times in terms of remunerating GPs for for that in in in, in comparison to everything else. Mm. So the landscape of GP um, is, is continually changing and the private billing model is increasingly more common, but there are different stakeholders involved, particularly from a preventative side as well, because from a, from a patient side, you know, you, it's not just in my own interest that I'm w well and good too. From a, from a bigger macroeconomic side, from an employer side, there's a lot of benefit too. So surely these stakeholders are all going to play a part. How are you thinking about that different changing stakeholder landscape over the, the, the you know, last five, 10 years and what that might look like um, moving forward? Absolutely. I, I think you, you raised a valid point there. The, 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 the problem or one of the problems I have in general practice right now particularly look after relatively fit well population is those patients very rarely come to a GP. Mm. Uh, they come to a GP when they're unwell and then they talk about all this preventative stuff. So in the first place, so if they didn't need that medical certificate or if they didn't get unwell or if they didn't have to come to the GP for the, their cervical screening or their pill, mm. that is that whole opportunity is missed. So that's why we're kind of focusing on even like, like having online platforms where those simple things are done in a way it can cause negative um, impact Yeah, because it, it gets you out of that opportunistic care. Mm. Um, I personally think so again, when it comes to patients between let's say 20 and 50, when they are going through their ups and downs in their career when they're going through their day-to-day -day life they like you know that opportunity is missed because those that's usually the healthy population who will never come and see a gp i don't know the stats on top of my head i'm but i'm pretty sure a very small population of those um that age group will come and see, mm. see the gp i'll talk about menopause for instance like when women go through menopause in their 50s or like in you know, the late 40s to mid 50s there's a lot of stigma. There's a lot of unknowns. People think, okay, what's going on? I like, you know, that whole population, it takes time and insight to even come and see a, see a GP. And some of these problems, patients and everyone around, and sometimes even doctors tend to normalize it. Therefore, we miss that opportunity of actually assessing that problem. Hmm. Women going through menopause, they're at the top of their career. They're, they're, uh, they're finding certain, like, you know, let's say, hot flushes type symptoms mm. and uh, sometimes uh, cognitive like you know brain fog type symptoms and um, that is something that's missed and by the time they come to a GP we might have missed two or three years of uh, care so if we can have a model where those patients can come and see a GP earlier on and to talk about preventative care and to talk about things that they might not um, identified that opportunity is going to be very helpful. Um, mm. Now, I think in America it works really well because it happens through your employer. Mm. Uh, and uh, they, they, there's a model where employers funding their care, uh, whereas here we are so mostly reliant upon Medicare and private health funding. Mm. Uh, I think there's a missed opportunity there. And if we can em get employers involved in their care, not only it will improve um, productivity, if you look mm. at the big pictures, you have a healthy uh, group of people working with you uh, and also it will improve or there's, there's some stats about return of investments of employer-based care of $1 to $5. Hmm. Like, you know, uh, and also it creates loyalty. And that's something that we don't think about in Australia because um, particularly people working from home these days or off-site and so on, we 
tend to go away from that personal touch. But having a model where an employer can get involved in, in providing that care and open a door will actually create um, loyalty as well. And that's why in America, pe people are reluctant to change their careers or jo jobs and sometimes yeah. uh, because they have that loyalty about the employer looking after you for a long period of time. So mm. again, that's a win-win situation for, 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 for the patient yes. and for the employer. And uh, for the entire population. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see how that landscape changes yeah. over time uh, in Australia, mod modeling off different parts and um, seeing how that, that changes. So I guess taking all that, all that into consideration, Guy Han, mm -hmm. um, thinking about the opportunities for technology in this changing landscape and the importance of general practice in the, 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 the broader healthcare system in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are you most excited about in terms of the, the future of this space? Where would you like to see it go? And also, you know, what could all those different stakeholders be thinking about and perhaps working towards, whether it's from the GP side that's looking to get more involved from the technology piece or from the other side, the technology vendors looking to be involved but actually have some meaningful problems to solve. So, Absolutely. Yeah. A good start for those technologies, so investors, would also be to have a chat with their own GP or have a GP. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, yeah. and sometimes, yes, as I said, those small things around, like, you know, a huge problem for us right now is communication between hospitals and, and GPs, the communication between GPs and GPs. Um, mm. Like, you know, if I call an ambulance, how do I hand over that information? So technology can help us in creating those channels. Like, you know, AI can help us because at the end of the day, most of those communication channels are based on a data set and language models so uh, like you know things like handover things like communication things like a simple stream deck oh, yeah. small things that's what we are we are looking for yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. gihan appreciate you making the time having a chat and uh yeah let, let's have a, a play with the stream deck after this perhaps we'll do that as a separate bonus video for people watching on youtube um thanks so much and looking forward to chatting again soon my pleasure and thank you very much for your time as well we hope you enjoyed this episode of Talking Health Tech. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this episode with someone who might find it valuable. For more information and resources about healthcare innovation, visit TalkingHealthTech.com.